Hello and Namaste. Last week I mentioned how Einstein's theory of relativity brought the observer to the center stage of physics. This was only the beginning. Quantum physics took this much further. In order to understand how, we need to talk about the most famous experiment of quantum physics, the double slit experiment. This experiment illustrates everything that is quirky and weird and crazy about quantum physics. We think of our world as solid and tangible, comprising of concrete objects which we can see and touch. I am sitting in front of this table. I can see it and feel it. I can feel the ground on which I am standing. There is nothing fluid or ephemeral about all these objects that I see and feel. Double slit experiment proved that this is just an illusion. There is nothing solid about the world we live in. I am not going to explain the experiment to you. That would require a separate post. I have posted a link in the description below which explains the experiment in detail. I am only going to talk about some of the results of the experiment. All of us who have learned physics in middle school know that light behaves both like a wave and a particle. This is weird in itself. What about actual particles like electrons and protons? They cannot possibly be anything other than solid particles, right? Wrong. The double slit experiment proved that particles too behave like waves, just like light. Particles behave like waves? What does this mean? You may conclude that a stream of particles move like a wave. What pops up in your mind is a row of electrons moving in a wave-like formation. Wrong again. Every single particle behaves like a wave. If you do this experiment with just one electron at a time, every single electron would behave like a wave. This completely baffled the scientists. How can something which we know for sure is a particle with a mass and a charge behave like a wave? A wave and a particle have opposite properties, isn't it? A wave is spread out in space. A particle is located in space. A wave is a continuous phenomenon, whereas a particle is a discrete entity. There is absolutely no resemblance between a particle and a wave. Seeing electrons transform into waves was mind-boggling in itself. This was only the beginning though. Scientists wanted to see how the electron is transforming into a wave. They developed detectors which could trace the path of each particle as it travels through the experiment. We should now be able to determine how the particle becomes a wave, right? Wrong again. Something really weird happened. The particles stopped behaving like waves in the presence of a detector. The double slit experiment done like this could only detect particles. No waves appeared. However, once the detector was removed, the particles started behaving like waves again. It is as if the particle knew that someone was watching it and behaved like a particle. Once it knew no one was watching it, it behaved like a wave. Exactly like a child would behave when he is not supervised. I mean, how can this happen? Electrons are inanimate particles. How can they change their behavior one way when someone is observing them and other way when no one is watching them? Many different approaches were tried to see if they can trace the path of a particle and observe its wave nature. Then someone came up with this ingenious idea. What if we retrace the path of the particle after the experiment is complete? This was done with another set of particles called entangled particles. Again, I am not going to elaborate on what entangled particles are in this post. You can think of them as twins whose behavior will mirror each other however far apart they are. It would be possible to know the path of one particle by observing its twin particle. 
This allowed the scientists to set up the experiment in such a way that they will know the path that a particle has taken only after the experiment is complete. In this setup, we are not observing the path of the particle as it is traveling. Instead, we are retracing its path after it has made the journey. Now, the scientists thought they had found an effective way of outwitting the particles. It cannot possibly know that they will be spying on it later on. They expected it to behave like that child who thinks he is not being supervised. We will finally know how the particle becomes a wave. It turns out that the particle had the last laugh. Even with this setup where you retrace its path after the experiment is complete, the particle continued to behave like a particle. It does not behave like a wave. It is as though the particle has omniscience. It seems to know that you will be tracing its path in the future and changes its behavior accordingly. I swear I am not making all this up. To summarize, when someone is watching, there is a particle. When no one is watching, there is no particle. There is only a wave. Can you see how quantum physics has pushed the observer to the very center of reality? It is the observer who brings the particle into existence. Before someone makes the observation, a particle is only an intangible wave which cannot be located in space or time. A particle does not have any real existence until it is observed. How spooky is that? I can hear you saying, what? Wait a second. How do you say that? You are thinking that I am making this leap because of my love for Vedanta. I would like to clarify that this is not my interpretation of the experiment. This is what the fathers of quantum physics like Heisenberg and Niel Bohr concluded. It is called the Copenhagen interpretation. It says that physical systems do not have definite properties prior to being measured. Before a measurement is made, a particle does not really exist in a definite place or have an actual motion. In other words, nothing is real unless it is perceived. What a paradigm shift from observation being a passive objective process of knowing about things that exist in this universe to being the reason that things come into existence in this universe. Now, let me take you back to my previous post. I spoke about the famous dream analogy of Vedanta. The only true relationship between you and your dream is this. You are a witness of your dream. You observe your dream. Why is this so important? Nothing can happen and nothing can exist in the dream world without you witnessing it. Think about it for a second. Can anything exist in your dream without you seeing it? In fact, the question itself is wrong. The objects in your dream get their existence because you witness it. The very act of you seeing it brings things into existence in your dream, isn't it? Brahman and the universe have a similar relationship. Everything is born in Brahman, exists in Brahman and resolves in Brahman. But Brahman is not an active participant in the process. It is only the witness to the universe. That is why Brahman is referred to in Vedanta as Sakshi Chaitanyam, the witness consciousness. Compare this to what quantum physics is saying. A particle does not have any real existence until it is observed. Physical systems do not exist until you measure them. They come into existence because you observe them. How can you not see the obvious parallels? Is this not the Sakshi Chaitanyam, the witness consciousness that Vedanta speaks about? Vedanta uses an interesting term to describe this consciousness. It is this consciousness that lends existence to the universe. Consciousness is the only thing that exists. 
everything else just borrows its existence from this all pervading consciousness think about it that's it from me this week thank you for watching please do subscribe and like and share with your friends if you are watching this on facebook i have posted the link to my youtube channel in the comments below please do take time to visit and subscribe until next week namaste